This is HSC option three, sports medicine. The key idea is how does sports medicine address the demands of specific athletes? And the specific athletes this dot point is looking at is female athletes. Now sport for females has health risks under certain circumstances. Um, endurance sports and sports that have an emphasis on body shape and weight loss are some examples. So for example, marathon running and gymnastics. Um, these are examples where female athletes have to be aware of issues that could potentially arise. Now it's the issues that make up the dash points for this particular dot point for female athletes. They are eating disorders, iron deficiency, bone density and pregnancy. Now the right hand side student learn to um, is having a bit of a focus on the iron deficiency and bone density. So let's get into a bit of an overview um, of female athletes. Um, these dash points, uh, these, is these issues can be overcome if the situations are actually managed correctly. Uh, female athletes are then able to enjoy the benefits of participating in sport and physical activity. So moving on to the first dash point, eating disorders. Um, Sports where problems may arise for eating disorders, there are a range of sports that require what is considered to be an ideal body shape to compete. Um, these sports include gymnastics, um, diving, figure skating and swimming is one example and there was an example there of Liesl Jones from a recent Olympics where she was put under some pretty severe media scrutiny for her actual body shape and that actually um, Lucille Jones came out and spoke about how that impacted upon her after the Olympics in a TV interview. Another example is actually the sport of tennis where many of the athletes, uh, this term is phrased around them of sexploitation, where to get some of the major sponsorship dollars that are on offer, um, they almost feel compelled to dress and look in a certain way. Um, add the pressure of coaches and fellow competitors and there's a recipe for some female athletes to experience eating disorders such as anorexia and bulimia. So what is anorexia? Well, anorexia nervosa is characterized by low body weight and body image distortion with an obsessive fear of gaining weight. That means they have um, an inaccurate view of what their actual body weight, uh, body shape looks like. Um, bulimia nervosa is the consumption of abnormally large amounts of food in relatively short periods of time, then followed by compensa compensatory behavior such as purging or over-exercising to try and work off that calorie intake. Now there are some signs and symptoms that uh, coaches, family and friends can look out for female athletes who are perhaps on the verge of experiencing an eating disorder or in fact are in the midst of an eating disorder. Some of these signs and symptoms include constant dieting, uh, regular visits to the toilet, um, refusing to eat certain foods, uh, rapid weight loss on the, uh, on the scales, irregular or loss of menstrual cycle, no need for an image there, and fatigue during uh, attempts at experiencing uh, exercise. It's important for coaches, managers and family to be aware of the dangers of eating disorders so they can be aware of the early signs and symptoms. Next dash point is iron deficiency. Iron deficiency, or is also known as anemia, is a condition where a lack of iron in the body leads to a reduction in the number of red blood cells. Now, iron is used to, pro is, is used to produce red blood cells, which help store and carry oxygen in the blood. If you have fewer red blood cells than is normal, your organs and tissues, particularly the muscles, will not get as much oxygen as they normally would. Without adequate iron levels, the body will not be able to operate as efficiently during physical activity. The body will then fatigue more, le more quickly and will be less likely to be able to fight infection and athletes will be hit by sickness more readily. Um, females need twice as much iron as males do. This difference is mainly due to blood loss during menstruation. Diet. Uh, for, sorry, for diet, athletes who avoid red meat will struggle to get the necessary levels of iron that the body actually needs. So particularly female athletes who are vegetarians have got particular issues with iron deficiency. Um, also endurance athlete, training leads to an increase in red blood cells and therefore a need for more iron. Um, sweat loss is also an issue. This leads to an increased risk of iron deficiency. Symptoms of low iron include fatigue and just feeling weak and that just equates to poor athletic performance. 
supplementation in the form of iron tablets may be needed for athletes at high risk. These are athletes who, who compete and train in endurance events and athletes whose diet is low in red meat consumption such as vegetarians. The next dash point is bone density. Bone density is how strong the bones are of an individual. Low bone density is when a person has weak bones and those individuals are more prone to a d disease called osteoporosis. Female endurance athletes who train intensely um, are at risk of a menstrual cycle dysfunction known as amenorrhea. This is where the menstrual cycle completely stops for females. Now the cause of bone density issues is mainly based on the imbalance between uh, the calories lost during physical activity and the calories gained uh, through eating. Now it's a severe imbalance when uh, too many calories are lost during physical activity and not enough is uh, taken in through eating and, that's, and this leads to some of these bone density issues. Now the calorie imbalance increases the likelihood of menstrual dysfunction. Menstrual dysfunction then leads to hormonal imbalances which causes a reduction in bone density. The next and final dash point is pregnancy. Now pregnancy is not a sign that the woman should stop exercising. In fact, there, unless there are going to be any problems with the pregnancy, it is that the recommendation is that physical activity should occur during the um, duration of the pregnancy. Now there are certainly some factors to consider for, for females when it comes to pregnancy and exercise. And these factors include the actual trimester of the pregnancy, um, whether the physical activity is going to be involved in a contact or non-contact sport, and the actual intensity of the exercise itself. Now in the first trimester, now this is the first 12 weeks of the pregnancy, the baby is still small enough to be protected by the pelvic bone, so pretty much any exercise is actually uh, a good option for females. It's not until the second trimester where there's some risks can occur. If the mother was to fall or there is heavy contact in another sport from, a dip, from an opposition player, then there could be some potential risk to the baby. Sports that involve minimal contact, such as netball, are considered safe during the first trimester and into the second trimester, but the advice there certainly is to consult with their doctor. Any physical activity that doesn't involve contact, such as uh, uh, recreational activities like swimming and jogging, are safe during the entire pregnancy. Lifting heavy weights are potentially dangerous, particularly in the last and final trimester, the third trimester. The most important advice is that pregnant women should consult their medical specialist about their plan for exercising. Now the benefits for the mother if they participate in physical activity during their pregnancy is that they have more energy, uh, they're more prepared for the physical demands of labour and there's a quicker recovery time after the labour and also a quicker return to pre-pregnancy fitness and their ideal weight. Now the benefits for the baby if the mother can um, participates in physical activity come particularly in the first trimester when the placenta is being formed. Um, the physical activity of the mother helps forge extra blood vessels so there is more opportunity to exchange nutrients between the mum and the baby. Now that's the end of the dash points but there's probably one issue that you need to be aware of and this is this uh, idea called the female athletic triad. Now this is what three of the disorders that I've talked about um, in this video today including eating disorders, um, bone density issues and also menstrual issues for the uh, females particularly when it comes to amenorrhea which is when the menstrual cycle ceases to happen. Now th these three issues are largely caused by an energy imbalance for female endurance athletes. That meaning that um, they consume too many calories, not enough calories in their diet and they burn too many calories during physical activity. Now if that imbalance happens, um, then they are at increased likelihood of uh, being affected by these three uh, issues and many of them are quite serious and can cause some long-term uh, impact for the female athlete. So that's the end of female athletes. You can find more Year 12 PDHPE information at the website coachpdhpe.com.